Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on the Flash Supergirl Arrow. It's sort of like a crossover video, but also we've got some theories I want to be talking about in terms of who could potentially be the villain of Supergirl Season 5. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year. Alright, so I'm including all this in one video because I don't think each individual bit can, you know, make a whole video. So hopefully you're fine with it, hopefully you're fine with me combining this. But today I was at MCM London Comic Con, Stephen Amell was there and a bunch of the other Arrow actors and also Tyler Hoechlin. He was really cool, but no news really came out of Tyler's talk. So talking about Steven, so basically what he confirmed, he was asked about Crisis on Infinite Earths at the panel to do with just him today and what he went on to say was Crisis on Infinite Earths has already started and will continue to build in Season 8 of Arrow and therefore we can presume The Flash and Supergirl and so it's not going to just definitively start where the crossover starts and it's going to continue until the end. So I think that's super interesting. And he said it started at the end of Arrow Season 7. And then obviously as well at the end of The Flash, Supergirl and Legends. Because we saw all the different end scenes. They all linked to Crisis. Whatever the end scenes like Supergirl and multiple ones. Two of them actually link into Crisis. So basically what Steven has said already is. Basically the, mon the anti-monitor sorry is already you know setting his plans and I'm guessing due to the way he worded it because it's already started you would have to hazard the guess that in season 8 of Arrow building up to Crisis which is normally around the mid-season point of the shows there's going to be a build up and there's probably going to be appearances and different sort of plot points that lead towards Crisis and the fact that he says it's already started and it's not going to just start when the crossover starts. I think that's super, super interesting because then we can sort of theorize that maybe the first part of the season for all these shows is going to be heavily focused on how they're going to be involved in the crossover. And maybe the monitor's going to pop up a couple of times on all the different shows. Hasn't been confirmed, but that's just a theory right now. So I think it's very, very interesting. So let me know in the comments down below what do you think about this. I was kind of shocked that he said it. Obviously, we had the teasers at the end of the season. We were like, oh yeah, Crisis is going to come very soon. But the monitor seems like he's just preparing. But the way Stephen words it, it seems like the anti-monitor is actually coming right now. Like it's imminent. And we're going to see sort of different lead-ups towards when the crossover actually officially starts. And right now, I'm just sort of curious to see when they're going to announce the anti-monitor. Because... Those people that don't read the comics, you know, they won't know about the Anti-Monitor and what's to come because he was only referenced in the Elseworlds crossover, he wasn't actually, like, said out loud as far as I can recall. But yeah, they're going to have to explain the Anti-Matter universe and how that links in, how Reverse Flash is going to link in. Are they going to change the comics and the Anti-Monitor is not going to come? Is it Reverse Flash? I don't think they're going to do that because loads of people will be really pissed off if the Anti-Monitor doesn't show up, including myself. But I feel like Reverse Flash is going to play a really big role due to obviously the newspaper article and what has been teased in the past on The Flash and also at the end of this season. So they're definitely changing the comics and I'm looking forward to seeing their changes. But for now, I just really want an announcement sometime, maybe at Comic Con for the Anti-Monitor. See what he looks like, maybe release a poster or something like that. And then we'll see, you know, because he's a really strange character to actually do in live action i don't know how they're gonna do him but i'm very interested okay so let's move on to talk about this so just before we go into my theory as to maybe a different supergirl season 5 villain um basically i just checked up and the flash when it releases on dvd what has been confirmed to be on the inside so i talked about there's going to be a deleted scenes and there's going to be a gag reel on the dvd and blu-ray for season five but what also is going to be on there that has been confirmed is the best of DC TV's Comic Con panel from San Diego 2018. Obviously, we get that every year, so that's a no-brainer. But the interesting thing is, 
they have confirmed that there's going to be a featurette called The Evolution of Killer Frost. So I'm guessing that's going to be a range of interviews with Danielle Panabaker, the showrunners, and sort of cut between Caitlyn's progression in the season. So I think that's very exciting, looking forward to actually watching that. Also there's the Inside the Crossover featurette called Elseworlds, and also Villains Modes of Persuasion featurette, obviously to do with Cicada, and probably a bit to do with Reverse Flash, so look out for that. But anyway, let's move on to my theory. I think this is the most interesting part of the video, and this is to do with Season 5 of Supergirl. So, let me know in the comments down below. I haven't really heard this, but I think it's kind of nutty, and I think it could really work if they go for it. So, with how Brainy sort of malfunctioned a few episodes ago, and you know, he's back to normal now, right? But with him getting rebooted and his ancestors sort of taking control, but not really taking control, just being more like them. What happens if that maybe the signal that is inside his head, this change in his head is still there, right? And he's able to be taken over. What happens if this version of Brainiac is actually the version that they're fighting in the future? That mon and Wynn and the Legion are fighting in the future but they don't know it because he doesn't go back to the future until he becomes evil and obviously I don't know at what point that would be but I think that's a very interesting theory that the idea of Brainiac 5 who's supposed to be the good Brainiac could inevitably one day turn into a bad version of Brainiac because you know we saw a version of that a few episodes ago I think in the penultimate episode where he malfunctions and he locks Nero away he sends Nero away and also Jean is thrown in there as well so he malfunctions and he very much so taps into his ancestors sort of more villainous side so what happens if Brainiac 5 actually is his ancestor that mon and Wim were called back to the future for because we never saw him remember that we never saw what Brainiac looks like in the future the villain they're supposed to be fighting and that's why Wim had to go with mon and mon couldn't stay in the past so, would that be a way, an interesting way for Brainiac to wrap up his arc on the show to eventually become that villain that he obviously isn't very much so right, like right now, but he inevitably joins his heritage and becomes what everyone else in his family naturally becomes, someone evil. And I just think that's a really interesting idea. And I think that could be a way for him to wrap up his story and then also link back and bring back Wynn for maybe a couple of episodes and maybe mon you know, for the 100th episode or something like that. So they realise in the future, oh shit, this is Brainiac 5 who is now Brainiac. I don't know what is going on and, you know, I think that would be an interesting theory. I don't think it's too far-fetched actually since we saw that sort of breakdown in the last few episodes. So, another thing backing it up is Leviathan. So, we saw them at the end of the season, and we saw a bunch of people turning around all at once. They're all being controlled. It seems like they're being mind-controlled or controlled in some sort of way. And you would have to assume Brainiac has a similar power where he could probably control everyone. And he is very, very smart. So keep that in mind. So what happens if Leviathan is actually controlled by one mastermind, which I think it should be, and I think it will be controlled by one mastermind. What happens if it's an evil version of Brainiac from the future that Wynn and mon are actually fighting, and that links back Wynn. That's the way to show Wynn coming back to the show, because he's supposed to be coming back next season, and this evil version of Brainiac is actually this version we see in the past, but in the past he's not bad yet. But we've obviously seen glimpses of it and maybe it's a bit like what happened uh, last season when they mentioned that the blight was actually taken over like being controlled by something and you know the legion had to stop it but maybe it's this version of brainiac who has actually brought back leviathan and the idea of leviathan being everywhere and they've always been here i think very much so could link into the idea of time travel with them always being here so, what do you think about that? I think it's kind of crazy, but I think it's a really good idea and it makes sense if they would do that. And I know it's far-fetched, but let me know in the comments down below, what do you think about that? Do you think that this version of Brainiac 5 
do you think he's one day going to, or could he one day turn into an evil version of Brainiac and be that same villain that the Legion are fighting in the future? And would they bring it back and link it into the idea of someone controlling Leviathan and someone as powerful as Brainiac could definitely do that. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe, turn on notifications, share this video with your friends. We're getting very close to 100k. We're about 5,000 subs away. I really want to make it. And once we do make it, we're going to make some amazing little videos for you guys. Maybe some IRL videos like Q&A, maybe some vlogging or whatever you guys want. Let me know. So yeah, share it around. Tell your friends in real life. If they watch the shows, come check out the channel. That would mean so much to me. So I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.